Okay guys, so I know you have all been waiting for this. I finally finished the second book in the Castile series, Dark Angel. I couldn't find the physical book, so I decided to do the audiobook. I was a little worried as to whether or not I would retain it the same way, but I think I have for the most part. It took me a little longer to get through the audiobook. It took me about a month. I feel like when I read the physical book, I plow through it a lot faster, but anyway. So I have finished the book, and I have watched the Lifetime movie, and thank you to all of you who have subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate it. I'm glad that you guys are liking these video reviews, so I'm just going to get into it, all the differences from the book to the movie. I'm going to try to sort of go in order from the beginning of the book slash movie to the end. Um, just bear with me if I stumble or make a mistake. Um... I took notes on my phone so that I would remember everything I wanted to talk about. So let's start off with Jillian. Jillian was completely different in the movie from the book. In the movie, Jillian was not happy at all that Heaven came to visit. She seemed very mean and the way she talked about Lee, oh, Lee used her tricks on Tony, she seduced him, and she was a tramp, um, and she was never without a cocktail in her hand. She wasn't like that at all in the book. So in the book, Jillian was happy to have Heaven come for a visit. She actually went with Tony to pick her up at the airport. So on the car ride back to Farthingale Manor, Tony is asking Heaven all these questions about her childhood and wanting to know if her mother had been happy. And Jillian says, Oh, Tony, please, let's not talk about that now. It upsets me too much. Um, she was very upset when Lee left. She never understood why she left, and she always said that it hurt her very deeply. So she didn't really want to talk about Lee very much. And she told Heaven that she wanted to show her around Boston, but unfortunately her and Tony had a dinner party to go to that night that they had had planned for weeks. Um, for the most part, Jillian was always off planning parties, things like that. You know, she had told Heaven, oh, we're going to do lots of things together, but she never really seemed to have a lot of time for Heaven, or whenever she did decide to do something with Heaven... Heaven had already made her own plans, and it seemed like when Heaven wanted to spend time with Jillian, Jillian was always too busy. So, let's see. Tony. In the book, when Tony said he would expect certain things in return for convincing Jillian to let her stay, he never tried anything inappropriate with her. He just said, you will let me choose the school you go to, the clothes you wear, I will decide the boys that you date. And he didn't have to ask Jillian for permission. It was his decision if Heaven stayed or not, and Jillian didn't really seem to mind one way or the other. So, as far as the school she went to, Winter Haven was not a school where the girls had to wear uniforms. Tony took Heaven shopping, bought her all of these nice clothes, he wanted her to look better than all the other girls there, but to Heaven's embarrassment, her first day in class, none of the other girls were dressed like her. They were all wearing ratty old jeans and sweaters and sweatshirts, so she was kind of embarrassed and disappointed that nobody else dressed like her. So, later on in the book, Tony mentioned something about, oh, it's such a shame the way the girls at Winter Haven dress. So at the dance, same thing, she dressed very nicely, all of the other girls were dressed very casually. And yes, they did spike her punch with laxative, but in the book, when she tried to go to the bathroom, the girls had locked all the bathrooms so she couldn't get in, leaving her no choice but to go back to her room and take one of her garment bags and use that to go to the bathroom. And then she threw it down the laundry chute, and then the girls were teasing her, saying, oh, we do it to all the new girls, you know, it's no big deal, just a little hazing, and there's just one last thing you have to do in order to be a part of the group. All you have to do 
is go down the laundry chute. And Heaven said, but it's dark down there. How do I know that it's safe and that I won't get in trouble? And one of the girls, Morgan, insisted, oh, we've all done it. It's no big deal. Heaven said, okay, well, maybe if I was to see you do it and I knew that it was safe, then I would do it. So Morgan says, fine, I'll go down there. So she goes down the laundry chute, and then a little while later you hear her scream because she landed on the garment bag. And then she comes back up and says, see, there you go, perfectly fine. And Heaven says, gee, you know, I don't think I want to be a part of your group anyway, but thanks. So she kind of got to have her own little revenge last laugh there. So let's see. Logan. So in the book, she went to visit Logan at school to try to explain about Cal, but he really didn't want to listen, didn't want anything to do with her. And she saw him at a coffee shop kissing a girl. She was upset. She left and tripped and fell in the snow. And when he came out and tried to help her, she became very defensive. I don't need your help. And then she said, oh, I see. You only liked me when I was helpless, you know, you just had pity for me. You never really loved me, and now that I'm not helpless, you don't want anything to do with me. And she told him she never wanted to see him again, and she left. And also, that whole part in the movie when she saw Logan's mother, and she said, oh, I'll be sure to tell Logan to call you. That didn't happen in the book, but anyway... So, Troy. Yes, she started a relationship with Troy, and while it seemed that Tony was opposed to it, he, in fact, sort of secretly hoped they would end up together, thinking that maybe Heaven could be the one to finally pull Troy out of his funk. Troy, as a child, was always very sick and did, in fact, have dreams where he foresaw his own death and thought that he would die at a young age, and he says that Jillian never really had much use for him as a child because he was always so sick and she didn't like him very much. But he did like Lee very much and had a special connection with her and was very upset when she left. So, let's see. Also in the book, Heaven went to see Keith and Jane. Troy had located them and Rita Rawlings, their adoptive mother, told Heaven that she could go to their Sunday school and stand in the back of the class and look at them. Heaven just wanted to see that they were okay and see that they were living a happy life. So Rita said, okay, but you have to stand in the back and please don't let them know that you were there. I don't want them to start crying again at night and having nightmares. So she did, and they never knew she was there. But then she decided to go to their house. She just wanted to see the house they were living in see that it was a nice house and that they were happy. And she was just looking in the window, never intending to go in. But then Keith and Jane spotted her, and when she tried to talk to them, they freaked out and told her to leave. But later on in the book, Tony told Heaven that he was having a party and he invited some special guests that he thought she would be happy to see. So she goes out to the pool to see the Rawlingses and Keith and Jane, and Rita says, oh, heaven, I'm so sorry about what happened. Tony called and explained everything to us. And, of course, now that she was a Tatterton, I think she liked her a little bit more. And she felt bad for trying to keep Keith and Jane away from their sister. And she agreed that they could see them, see each other twice a year. And Keith and Jane said they didn't mean to freak out when she saw them before, they were just afraid. They were happy to see her, but they were afraid they were going to have to go back to their life in the shack of being poor and hungry, and they liked their new family. So Heaven was happy as long as they were happy. So let's see Fanny. Fanny's accent. In the second movie, the accent she had is the accent she should have had right from the beginning. That's exactly how she talked in the book. And she didn't live in a trailer. Fanny lived in an apartment in New York, a seedy apartment. She was trying to become an actress, going out on auditions, but was told she wasn't good enough. So Heaven went to visit her, brought her lots of nice gifts, and 
Fanny did ask her to go back to the Wises and try to buy her baby back. And she said, If and you can't buy my baby back, I'm going to go to your new family, the Tattertons, and tell them all about your hillbilly life and fill them in on just exactly what happened to your poor precious mother, and then they'll want nothing to do with you. So once again, Fanny was very selfish and demanding. So Heaven did go back to Winterrow to try to get the baby back from the Wises, but then she had second thoughts, thinking, what am I doing here? Fanny wouldn't be any better of a mother to this child than the Wises would be. You know, the Wises are pretty good parents. She seemed happy and loved, and Fanny only wants this baby back out of revenge. So she decided to let them keep the baby. Sorry, bear with me here. Okay, so also when she was back in Winterow, she ran into Cal, and Cal wanted to talk to her. He wanted another chance, but she didn't want anything to do with him. So that was the first time she was back in Winterow. And then another time when she was back, Logan says to her, Oh, I hear that Cal Dennison came back to Winnero just to see you. And she said, Well, if he has, he hasn't called me at all, and I never want to see him again. And at that point, she was able, I think, to explain to Logan what had happened between Cal and really make him understand. So while Heaven was staying in Winnero, her grandfather was there, Toby, and this is how the book was so different because, as I said before, in the first movie, they cut the grandfather out right in the beginning of the movie. But he was actually very much a part of the second book. Of course, his wife Annie had passed away, but he still thinks she's alive, and he talks to her all the time. So, Heaven tried to convince her elderly grandfather to come back to the hotel with her, but he insisted, Oh, don't worry about me, child. I'm going back up to the shack. And she said, The shack? Wait a minute. You can't go back up there. And she was worried about him going back up there by himself. So she got in her rental car, started up the hill to the shack. It was pouring rain. Her car got stuck. And Logan came to the rescue and drove her up the rest of the way. And that's where she came down with the flu. Oh, and to her surprise, the shack was no longer a shack. It had been rebuilt into this really nice cabin with two bedrooms and two bathrooms. And Logan said that her grandfather lived there now, and that Logan would come up a couple times a month and bring supplies. So, and then she finally makes it back to Farthingale Manor to see Troy, and that's when Tony confronts her about her real age and tells her that she can't marry Troy because Tony is her real father, and she has to break it off with Troy. And... Troy eventually learns that he's her uncle, and he decides to take off, go around the world, visit the different toy factories. And I think at this point, this is when Jillian learned about Tony and Lee. I don't think she knew from the beginning about them, and that's when Jillian started to sort of lose touch with reality and act crazy, and they had to hire a nurse to take care of her. So, yes... Tony, sorry, Troy did die, but it was different in the book. In the book, he had come back, and Tony was having a party, and Troy was still depressed, and this girl that he was talking to that he used to date was kind of teasing him a lot, and he decided to take off. He went to the barn, saddled up one of the horses, and rode it through the hedge maze, and the horse got confused, didn't know where it was, went crazy, jumped the hedge maze, and took off into the ocean. And the horse came back the next day, but they never found Troy. Okay, so... Back to Winterow. The circus is coming to town with Luke and Tom. So the first night of the circus, Heaven dresses her grandfather up very nice in these nice new clothes, she wants him to look 
really nice and she also at this point has decided to dye her hair blonde. So, excuse me. So she dresses Tony up all nice. Sorry, um, Toby. Her grandfather Toby. She dresses him up all nice. They get in her Jaguar convertible and ride through town. She wants all the people in Winnero to see them now, to see that a scumbag hillbilly Castile could make something of themselves, and she wants her grandfather to be proud and to hold his head up high. So he's sitting in the back of the car talking to his imaginary wife, Annie, saying, Annie, look at the way they're all looking at us. They're oohing and on. Ain't it something, Annie? It sure is something. And, of course, all the town folks are looking at them. Hey, isn't that Toby Castile, Luke's father? And that's heaven. And, you know, they're very shocked at the way that they have changed. So that night, they go to the circus, and Fanny is also there as well. She's actually moved back to Winnero. She married a rich old guy, but then divorced him when she found out that he only wanted her for having babies, or to be his broodmare, as she put it. She said, I kicked him to the curb when I found out all he wanted me for was having babies. If he thinks that I'm going to ruin my perfect figure when I've already had one kid, and he's already got two grown kids of his own, and he said, well, what else did you think I wanted you for aside from having babies? So she got a nice alimony from him and has quite a nice house in Winnero that she was eager to show to Tom and Heaven, and she says that the Wises have let her see the baby a couple of times. They've brought the baby over, and then Heaven finds out that that's her real plan. She's going to try to get the baby back, but of course, she only wants the baby back out of revenge, but Heaven wants nothing to do with it anyway. So... Then we come to the second night of the circus. So this is where tragedy happens that did not happen in the movie. The movie sort of ends with her writing a letter to her brother Tom about her plans to be a teacher in Winnero. Well, in the book, The Second Night of the Circus, Heaven decides this time She's going to wear one of her mother's dresses and look just like her mother. She wants Luke to see her and see how much she looks like her mother, his precious angel, to be reminded of her. And she thought, then he'll really need me, then he'll really love me. And then, of course, she's going to break his heart by telling him that he's not really her father. So she goes back behind the curtain and... Luke is back there, and the lion is in the cage. Luke, I guess, had to fill in for the lion tamer because the lion tamer was too drunk to show up to work. So she starts to have second thoughts and decides, what am I doing here? I don't want to do this, and decides to leave. But before she turns to leave, Luke has already spotted her, and he's stopped dead in his tracks. He's just staring at her because, of course, she looks like her mother so much. And then, after a few minutes of them staring at each other, Heaven flees the tent. And then, when she leaves, she hears this big commotion happening. She doesn't know what's going on. She asks one of the other workers what's happening. And he says, it's the lion. The lion got out of his cage, and he started attacking this other guy. Well, Luke jumped in to try to get him off the other guy. And then the clown jumped in to try to save Luke. And the clown got mauled. And... He ended up being hurt so bad that he did not survive his injuries. The clown was her brother, Tom. Tom jumped in to try to get the lion off of Luke, and his injuries were too severe, and he died. And she started crying, it's all my fault. She said, oh, I wish it had been Luke. I don't care at all what happens to him, but she was very heartbroken over the death of her brother, and she blamed herself. Okay, so... There you guys have it. I think for the most part, I have covered everything...
differences from the book to the movie. Um, so Jason Priestley, he played Tony Tatterton, and he also directed the movie. Um, no offense, Jason, but what exactly do you know about V.C. Andrews? If your goal was to make a movie that was nothing like the book, then congratulations. You did a great job. The book was, once again, so much more epic than the movie. Jason, I think you should stick to what you're good at, which is 90210. Okay, so hope you guys like it. Now I have to find the next book, read that, and then watch the next movie, and then give you guys that review. And there you have it. Feel free in the comments to let me know if I missed anything or anything I didn't cover that you'd like me to talk about. All right, until the next book and movie review.